Welcome to the Rick Hills Real, Show, Real Estate Show, blah, blah, special Saturday edition. Why a Saturday edition? Well, I woke up, saw some numbers today, and I just kind of have to share them with you and uh, let you know what we see going on. It's not alarming, but it is a game changer. And um, we've always said here on this channel, nobody rings a bell to tell you when you're at the top. Nobody rings a bell to tell you when you're at the bottom. But I think it's okay to shoot a couple flares up and go, hey, you might want to take a look at this um everybody wants to sell right at the top and sell at the bottom and the reality is you need to be happy with that chunk out of the middle some people are having homes built and they're going to be done pretty soon maybe by the end of summer and they're wanting to know should i sell now should i wait will i get more if i wait and they'll feel real bad if they didn't you know, if they're looking in the rearview mirror and going, holy cow, you know, in May, I could have got a lot more than I'm getting here in July. <clears throat> There's some numbers here that are showing that there are some changes here you may want to follow. And one of them is the simple Cromford market index that we look at. And it shows you that, you know, everything's going the other way, more towards a balanced market, but still a pretty long journey there, according to these numbers, with Fountain Hills being 473 and the the normal, what we want to call balanced market that we rarely see in Arizona is 100. Buckeye's knocking at the door there at 188. Maricopa's at 219. But what we're seeing is not the number that they're at, but how rapidly they're going the other way. Supply is growing in almost all areas thanks to plentiful and growing flow of new listings. While some are going under contract at a slower rate than we've seen for a long time. He goes on to say it'll take several months of this trend continuing to reach a balanced market, but it no longer looks like a far-fetched idea. Hmm. When is that balanced market coming? Well, this morning I woke up and saw this. This is the contract ratio. It's another measurement of supply and demand. How many homes are out there? How many are going under contract? You know, I track that on a daily basis here, and you can see that the blue line represents how many listings came on. The red line represents how many are going under contract. That's the largest gap we've seen ever since we started coming out with this chart. Below are price changes, and you can see that they've certainly gone up. This is an indication that people are probably not getting their asking price. This is an indication that the number of homes that are going on the market are not getting under contract at the rate that they were up here. And it's saying down here on the bottom, the fall from 250, which was right here, to 145 this week is even more dramatic than in the sudden drop we saw at the start of that wonderful cough that was out there. The drop in 2020 was quickly recovered, and within two months, we were back higher than what we started. So in other words, in 2020, which is this line here, we dropped at that same rate, but we recovered and went right back up. And we all know why. March, stay home for a couple weeks. And then, you know, the checks started flowing in about here. People could no longer enjoy all the amenities that they had at their luxury apartments. They said, I got to get a house. I want to get out of here. And so everybody went out and drove, started buying. We don't see those types of forces now that are going to take us back to that. So this downward trajectory... There isn't any headwinds there to slow that down that we can see as far as the market picking way up. Now, will there be some seasonality because everybody's going to the prom right now? You got graduations? Yeah, maybe, but this has been going on for six weeks. And seasonality right now in this market has kind of disappeared. Um, there's just, it's just been too crazy. And with the spike in interest rates, that erases any seasonality that we've seen. And it says here... 2014 was the last time we had a market that was fairly normal. So use that for reference. We could almost get to 2018 levels here. And what's going to happen, it tells us that the previously crazy hot market that has turned into just a hot market, but it also tells us that the cooling trend continues at a similar rate. We could be in a warm market within a month. Now, we don't even remember what a warm market looks like. A normal market, normal, within two months. Really? That's what, it's, that's what it's showing. The former is probably very likely. In other words, a warm market. The second is more speculative, and anyone who tells you that they know what the market's going to do in three months is just kidding themselves. Exactly. We think we know, we can estimate where we think three months coming out, but we don't know for sure. There's a lot 
there's a lot that can change. But one of the things is glaringly apparent right now, and that is that um, the gap between number of homes going on and going under contract is widening. And it's widening at such a rate that the advantage for sellers gets less and less as each week goes by. So if you are looking at putting your home on the market and you want to get that very, very top, um, it's within this one to three month range according to what we're looking at. Beyond that, anybody's guess. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that if there's more homes on the market and less of them are going under contract, that your home's going to take longer to sell. When you're out there buying right now, um, you may start to see some relief in the next few weeks. In other words, when you get there, you may not be the 30th person that walked through the door. Instead of them getting 10 offers, they may get three. You may not have to put in any, uh, uh, you know, waive the inspection, put in any appraisal gap language. You may be able to actually offer the asking price. Imagine that. Imagine that. Or how about this? Offer them less than the asking price. See what happens. Sellers will start making concessions before they start drastically lowering the price. Now, they are lowering the price now at a larger rate than we've seen all year, but it's still not really big. Maybe $1,200 um, out of, what do we have now, 8,000 listings this morning. And so, you know, they are reducing their prices a smidge, not much. But before they do that, they'll buy your home warranty for you. Um, maybe they'll help you out with some closing costs. There's a lot of things that you can get as a buyer. You'll start seeing more and more of that as inventory builds. And we're seeing that now, and it's the second week of May, and here we go. It looks like it's going to be a, a very interesting summer for sellers. The market's in the early stages shifting out of an insane seller market and into a mere frenzied seller market. Well, before we know it, it'll be regular old hot seller market where properties still appreciate but take multiple weeks to sell. I don't think anybody's going to be used to that. If you don't sell it in a weekend, you're going to be calling your realtor going, what happened? What happened? Buyers don't waive their appraisal contingencies and sellers are happy to pay for home warranties. But before all that happens, it starts with one simple act from a seller, a list price reduction. So in here, Cromford, Michael Orr is saying that you'll see a price reduction before you start seeing them giving you things like the appraisal and contributing towards closing costs. Um, that can be either or. You know, some people like to do things on the back end um, and just give you some credit at the close of escrow. Uh, but they're going to be more willing to work with you versus just saying, give me your highest and best and we're going to review all offers on Monday. I see less and less of that verbiage in the MLS now. I remember just a few short months ago, they would list something on Thursday and say, not available to see until Saturday. Uh, we're going to have an open house for two and a half hours, and we're going we're to review all offers on Monday. Now Monday comes, you go, where's the offers? <laughs> I thought we were going to have a million offers here. Looks like that's changing, and it looks like that's changing rapidly. The number of price changes coming according to how they track it are going up, um, but they've certainly been higher in 19... 2019 and 2020, but they're starting to beat where we were last year. It depends on the city. So price changes are definitely happening out there. So if you're out there shopping, um, you should be encouraged. You're starting to see more, more inventory. Not a lot, but we're getting there. I mean, at this time, two months ago, on a Saturday, we'd be sitting below 6,000 listings, about 58. And uh, today we're a little above 8,000. So when you start going neighborhood by neighborhood, that can make a difference for you. So there's a lot going on in the market um, right now as people try to adjust to the sudden spike in interest rates. A lot of chatter that this is a crash. Here it comes. Based on the numbers that I'm seeing right there, I don't see an indication of a crash. I do see an indication right now over the next few weeks where it's going to be dramatically slower. And sellers, if you're thinking about selling, uh, reach out to me. Let me see what I can do to help you. And uh, I think as you look and say, is May going to be better than the rest of the summer? It certainly looks like it if you're going to sell that uh, May may be your month. How about that? May may be your month. I should end on that. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.